Are you in need of unemployment benefits, but you're not really sure how to apply? This informational video is meant to help you understand what is needed to apply for unemployment. During the video, I'm going to walk you guys through an actual online application so you can see what it looks like and what you need to do to file on your own. So, the first step you need to do is you need to open a web browser and you need to go to iowaworkforcedevelopment.gov. So, Iowa Workforce development.gov. Okay? So you want to go to that site up there. You want to press enter. This then is the screen that should be in front of you. You then are going to go down here and press file unemployment. And then you should be brought to this page here. Okay? And you're going to press this blue button that says apply online now. So I'm going to click on that. And then you're brought to this page where you're prompted with a username and a password and it wants you to sign in. So this is for existing users if you already have an account. If you don't have an account, you're going to press this button here that says register new user. And then you'll fill in all of this information with your username, your password, your first name, last name, and then your email address. Okay. So if you haven't registered for an account already, you'll fill all that in and then you'll press register. But because I've already created an account for this video, I'm back here and I'm going to put in the username and the password that I have created. Remember though that when you make your username and password, when you make your login information, that you keep a copy of it somewhere. So write it down and then keep it, text it to yourself on your phone. Just make sure that you won't forget it. Okay, so that's my login information, and I press that I agree to the terms of use, and I press sign in. Okay, so once you successfully sign in, you should be presented with this welcome screen. And so what you're gonna do is you're then gonna press I accept, and we can now start filling out the unemployment claim. So the first thing that the unemployment claim needs is it needs your personal information. Okay, so I'm going to fill out some of my information. I'm going to change it a little because I don't need my real address out there. But so this is the type of stuff that you guys should be doing too. You know, you should put your name, your address, your town, your city, and your zip code. Um, because, you know, this video is for those in the Columbus Junction and surrounding area, it's asking for the local Iowa Works Center nearest to you. And so the one that is nearest to us, it has this drop-down location. All of these to choose from. It would probably be Burlington, okay? So I click that. Depending on where you live, it may be Iowa City, but for a lot of you, it also might be Burlington. So I do that. So then it wants a phone number. So I will create a phone number. Okay. Then it wants an email address. So I will do that. Okay, so now it wants your social security number. Um, so I'm putting mine in. Again, none of this is real. Okay, and now it wants your date of birth. So I put my birthday. And then it's going to start asking you different questions. So, have you moved out of Iowa since you last worked in Iowa? So, I would put, no, I haven't. Or if I have, then I would put yes, but because I haven't, I put no. The highest grade that I've completed in school. So, for me, 
12th grade is completed high school. I have completed college, so I put 16. Am I a citizen or national of the United States? If yes, you click yes. If not, you click no. Me, I am a citizen, so I put yes. If you say no, however, it will then ask for your A number, and it will ask for when your green card expires, okay? So that is information you need to provide if you're not a citizen. It'll then ask for your gender, so I am a female. It'll then ask specifically if you're Hispanic or Latino, I am not. And then it'll ask for you to select your race. So you find the one that most likely says you, and I am white, so I click that. Once this page is done, you then click Next. Ah, see, okay, so it caught that I was putting in a fake phone number. So I will put in a real phone number. And I'll enter that again. Okay, so uh, the website is smart and it knows that the address I've provided is not recognized by the U.S. Postal Service as a valid address. Uh, so it knows that I don't actually live at 123 Main Street in Fake Town, Iowa. But because this is going out on the internet, I'm not going to put my real information out there. So I'm going to just say that I'm going to use the address originally entered. And I press yes. Now, but obviously, you all need to put in your real address when you do it. And that way, the information can be mailed to you. That's what that little notice was asking to make sure that I'm aware that notices will be mailed to me and all of that. Okay. So once you click next on the personal information, you move on to the payment method. And so you have to choose your payment method or how you will receive your unemployment benefits. And so you have three different options. Okay. The three options you can choose from is you can have them, you can have uh, Iowa Workforce develop, deposit the benefits directly into your savings account. They can be deposited directly into your checking account. Or you can have those benefits deposited into a U.S. Bank Relia card account. You will get a card in the mail, and your unemployment benefits will be tied to that card, and that's how you access your benefits. That third option of the Relia card, the debit card, is a popular option, so I'm going to click that one. Okay, so this is what that Relia card looks like, and so if you choose this option that you want it deposited into a debit card, you will receive this in the mail and this is how you will be able to get those unemployment benefits, okay? So then you click next and then it'll ask you, uh, did you work in any states or possessions other than Iowa since October 1st, 2019? If you have, you will press yes and then you will fill out this information. If not, then you will press no and you will move on. The next section will talk about active duty military. So it will ask, were you an active member of the United States military on active duty since October 1st, 2019? If yes, this applies to you, you'll press yes and you'll fill out all of this information. If no, you'll click no, and then you'll simply press next and move on. The next question, it'll ask if you have worked for the federal government at any time since October 1st, 2019. If yes, you'll then fill out this additional information. If no, you'll simply move on. The next section asks if within the past 52 weeks, so within the past year, have you applied 
or received unemployment benefits? And if so, what states? So if you've applied for unemployment before within the past year, say maybe you applied way back at the beginning of the pandemic, but then you ended up getting your job back. So you no longer had to file your weekly claims, but now you're filing again. So you would say yes. And then you would say in what state? And so I was in Iowa at the time and all of that stuff. Or maybe you were in Illinois, whatever state applies to you. Or if you haven't applied for unemployment benefits in the past year, you simply say no and you move on. You'll then be asked about your withholding as unemployment benefits are a taxable income. So you'll decide whether you want that withholding done now or whether you want that withholding of the taxes done at the end of the calendar year, okay? So do you want your federal tax withholding deducted from your employment unemployment insurance benefits? If no, you'll press no. If yes, you'll press yes. The same for here. Do you want your Iowa tax withholding deducted from the benefits? Either no or yes. I say yes personally because then they're withheld from each benefit payment and I don't have to worry about paying those all off at one time at the end of the year. But it is up to you. I personally, though, do recommend pressing yes for both of these. All right, so after that, you'll press next. It will then ask you about any dependents you have. And if so, so if you have a spouse, any children or other dependents, if you say yes, you then need to fill out the rest of this information about what income your spouse makes and if they've ever applied for unemployment and then the names of any of your other dependents as well. So do you have a spouse that earned $120 or less last week? So if you say yes, then you have to enter their name. Have they filed for unemployment? Yes. Uh, do you have dependents other than yourself or a spouse that you were able to claim on your tax return? So if you claimed children, you would say yes, and then you'd have to list their names, okay? But if you don't have any dependents, you simply press no, and then you move on. Next, the form is going to ask you for information about your latest employer. And so the first thing it will ask is, was this work for this employer performed in Iowa? Okay, so my last job, yes, it was in Iowa. So I press yes, and then I move on. If I press no, then you need to put the employer's name and where you worked for this job. So their address, the state, all of that stuff, okay? But mine was in Iowa, so I press yes, and then I press next. So if your last work was done in Iowa, this box then pops up, and it wants you to search for your employer. So it wants you to put in your employer's name. So I worked for Casey's General Store, and I worked in Wapolo. And so I press search. And so there's no records found. So let's try again. If I say just Casey's, here we go. Okay, so we have Casey's General Stores, the worksite address. I would press select because that's where I worked. And so it then fills in all of that information for me. Uh, I do, however, still need to put like the employer's phone number. So I will just put, you know, 319, we'll just put my phone number again that I already had to put in because we don't need to be sharing numbers. Uh, I was a register worker. I was, so I press cashier. Uh, the date that I first started working for this employer, it was March 1st of 2018. And I worked on and off for them up until November, up until October 1st of 2020, okay? Uh, so I no longer work there. 
Uh, then it'll ask, did you or will you receive vacation and or a severance pay on your last paycheck or at the time of separation? You know, the answer is no. If the answer is yes, you then have to say what date that will be paid through, but mine is no. And then it will ask for you to select a reason for separation. And so you say the reasons here, you know, was it a layoff or a lack of work? Was it all of this stuff? And so for me in this scenario, I will say that I was laid off. Okay. And then I'll press next. All right, so then it'll go to your employment status, and it says, please select the statement that best describes your employment status with your most recent employer. So that's the one that I just put in, the most recent employer. It wants your employment status on that. And so I say, you know, why I've been laid off. And so I can say, you know, I'm filing due to a temporary layoff as a result of COVID-19. No, let's go back here. I'm actually, so I'll show you this. So if I was laid off because of COVID-19, uh, it shows that, you know, I don't have to look for work and I'm not required to complete a full registration for job search assistant. That, however, is not the same for every situation. So say you were laid off, but you are not likely to return to your recent employer. So say you were laid off, but the more you think about it, the more you realize, you know, I don't think I'm a good fit there. I don't really want to go. Okay, so if that is the case, you are required to make at least two job contacts each week. And job contacts may be made in person or by submitting a resume. And you also must keep a written record of your contacts and provide this information when requested. You are also required to complete a full registration for job search assistance by completing the below pages. Okay, so you know, you put, you can decide if you're interested in the National Career Readiness Certificate. You can decide if you're interested in a registered apprenticeship and all of that stuff. And so this is the tab you use to uh, do work registration. So, you know, your general info, all of that stuff. So, you know, your current employment status, you know, you're not working. Am I currently in school? No. All of that. So you fill that out, okay? I have to do this. Okay. For the sake of I don't want to file things that don't pertain to me, I'm just going to say this and move on. But if it does pertain to you, you do need to do that, okay? So here under the certify... Uh, section you will drop down and you will suggest you will pick your status so I certify under penalty of law that you know I'm either a citizen or a national I'm a refugee with permanent residence I'm an alien with employment authorized status or I am NOT a citizen and I am NOT claiming satisfactory immigration status you click whichever one applies to you and so I'm a citizen and so I click that and then I'm also going to check this box right here. And so by checking this box, you certify that you are responsible for reading and knowing the contents of the unemployment insurance. Basically, you're acknowledging that you know what you've put out here and you take responsibility for what it is that you have to do. So then you press next. And so this tab then says the verification process is completed. And so you'll press next to proceed with the submission process. And so you press next. Okay. So you're then, if you scroll down here, you're presented with a summary of all of the information that you provided. So everything that, you know, I put in, my personal information, my work history, all of that stuff here. 
okay? In addition, you're also uh, given a confirmation number and the instructions on how to continue to file the claims weekly because this is just the one claim that you file. You have to file weekly to continue to receive your unemployment benefits. And so that is an important thing to remember. Um, and you get that, your confirmation number and the instructions after you press the submit button. However, because as I've said, this is not a real application and I'm not actually applying for unemployment, I am not going to press the submit button. You, however, once you're doing this for real, should press that and then you will receive the additional instructions. Okay, so whenever you file your unemployment claim, your first week of the claim starts the Sunday before. So I'm applying, quote unquote, for unemployment benefits on March 3rd, 2021. So today is a Wednesday. And so the first week of my claim starts on Sunday, February 28th, 2021. And it ends on Saturday, March 6th. So my first week of my claim started last Sunday or three days ago. So what this means is like I filed on Wednesday. My first week started last Sunday. I can request payment for my first week starting on this coming Sunday. Okay. So I applied today. I can request payment for this first week starting on Sunday the 7th. Okay, and remember that each week you also have to refile your weekly claim so that you continue to get your unemployment benefits. Okay, so that's all that I have for this video. I hope that this has helped you to understand a bit more about unemployment and the filing process. Uh, you know, I'm not an expert when it comes to this, but I tried to do the best I could. If you have any questions still or, you know, you're confused or concerned, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. You can either call the Columbus Junction Public Library or you can stop in at any time during open business hours and someone will gladly assist you and try to answer any questions you may have. So thanks so much for watching, guys, and I hope applying for unemployment seems a bit easier.